Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Benji Cooney, who wants the Tropic Thunder Loadout, Jack Black's character known as Jeff Portnoy. In the movie, he had an M60, so I'll be running an M60 here with no attachments using a green jungle camo for the soldier, frag grenades, support gunner roll, bowie knife, M1911 for the sidearm, ammo box, and C4 because there was some C4 in the movie. Use a lot of ammo. I don't really play video games anymore, but I'm always entertained by watching you play. Have fun and send some lead down range. Now, I have a hard time passing up the opportunity to game with an M60 LMG. This thing hits like a truck. It makes an awesome sound. It's got a very low rate of fire, but it's also kind of aesthetically pleasing when it shoots. There's just something really cool about taking somebody down with this hog of an LMG. Now, in the movie Tropic Thunder, they are making a movie about the Vietnam War in modern times, and so the M60 is a weapon used in that film. Of course, it would be the original M60 and not the M60E4, which is a highly upgraded version of the weapon. It's got a rail system, upgraded internals, but aesthetically, it's still the same thing. It still sounds the same, and I believe the rate of fire and stuff like that really hasn't changed. Now, because this is a thematic loadout rather than something that's trying to actually be good or tactical, we aren't using any attachments on this weapon, which is unfortunate because you can actually make the M60 even better. I will say though, the iron sights, despite how boxy and awkward they are, I actually enjoy them a bit. There's just something about having this sort of nub of a crosshair at the top there that you can actually target people and uh, take them out at long range. I was actually winning a few sniper battles using this just horrible iron sight here that is just god awful for accuracy. Volume of fire is the name of the game with the M60, but tap firing also will allow you to be very accurate at further ranges. This gun has one hell of a recoil, but its first shot recoil is actually a .5 multiplier. Only LMGs actually have these really low first shot recoils, and that does allow you to tap fire relatively effectively. Now, if you're to do something like putting an angled foregrip on here to further reduce that first shot recoil, you would actually get a very effective tap fire weapon. You could even mount a higher magnification optic on here to allow you to hit those targets even more precisely and uh, frankly you can snipe with this thing once you do that. Popping up the sim thick stats here you will see that crazy high recoil of a 0.6 vertical, 0.4 left and 0.3 pull right but that first shot is only a 0.5, one of the lowest in the game so again tap firing this gun is really fun and it basically turns into a hundred round magazine DMR because you're going to be getting a lot of three shot kills, occasionally a four shot kill, but uh, you can shoot it faster than in DMR and uh, frankly you can be pretty darn accurate on DMR levels of accuracy as well. So it's really fun to use once you spec it out that way. Now because we don't have any attachments here, I've just kind of got to tap fire when I can and then kind of uh, burst fire for all other situations. The max damage is 34 and it drops off to 25. This gives you a three shot kill in close quarters and a four shot kill at range provided that you're not playing against guys with the defensive perk enabled. If that perk's enabled then it's going to add one extra shot to your time to kill in most of these situations. Obviously on the battlefield people are running around with small amounts of damage done to them anyway in pretty much all situations so it usually doesn't come to that but it's still a very fast killing weapon and uh, a very accurate weapon for the amount of damage it can do at range. Now as for game modes with this weapon I hopped into some rush because whenever I see a healthy rush server actually up in Battlefield 4 I have to hop on. It's one of my favorite game modes simply because it has a front line unlike any other game mode so it really concentrates the action in specific areas and is great for just intense infantry combat. Uh, sometimes vehicles enter the fray you know depending on what MCOMs you're at and what map you're playing on but still the infantry action in Rush I think is far superior to pretty much any other game mode. That being said Battlefield 4 Rush has been some of the worst Rush available but on a happier note, CTE is really making a lot of changes to the Rush game mode, redesigning uh, where the MCOMs are placed, what vehicles are available, and they're just basically trying to balance it out and make it more fun 
across all maps. And when infantry combat gets this concentrated, LMGs really excel because not only do you have that massive magazine to deal with any follow-up targets after your first, but you're also suppressing more than other weapons. Now suppression isn't quite what it used to be in Battlefield 3, but it is still an effective tactic to throw off the aim of your opponents. It's just such a great way to lock down corridors and avenues and get tons of kills while uh, backing up your teammates. As for the field upgrade system, you'll notice I'm running the defensive perk here just because you really don't need any of that extra ammo that you could get with the offensive perk. And you may as well have a stronger soldier that can take a little bit more chest damage. Remembering to constantly drop ammo boxes is an easy way to support your teammates and get a lot of extra points. Whenever I spawn on a squad mate, the first button I hit is the ammo box button and that basically just drops it right there and if that squad mate needs any ammo, even one magazine, it will replenish him and it will give me points. After that, I basically drop an ammo box at uh, any interval that I deem necessary. I'm always hitting that button, always dropping it near teammates and just all over the map. It doesn't matter if you drop an ammo box and nobody picks up any ammo from it. It's free, it recharges instantly, so you may as well be hitting it as frequently as you pretty much can. Now unfortunately, this rush server was dying off. My team just could not hold the enemy team at bay and I had to switch it up to a TDM server where certainly the individual is a little bit more important than the overall team effort. It's not to say that your team doesn't matter in team deathmatch, it's just that you can actually still do really well in TDM even if your team isn't pulling their weight. Now for whatever reason you happen to actually be using an M60 with the iron sights, which I don't recommend, but if you are, then don't set yourself up for long range engagements. I mean you can absolutely win sniper battles as I was, but you're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. I mean you can't really aim for the head with these kind of iron sights, you just kind of have to aim at their general mass, start tap firing and hope that you get a kill fairly quickly. Uh, so what I was doing, especially in uh, Hainan Resort here, is just staying indoors or in and around cover, which basically set me up for a lot of medium range and close range engagements where my iron sights were not going to put me at such a big disadvantage. Also, you do have to watch out for the size of the gun body. When you're aiming down sights, look how much of the screen it actually takes up. If you are on a second story and there are players below you, the gun body can actually block your line of sight on them and it can kind of trip you out. This is something that is not just the video game effect, but it certainly happens to me when, say, playing airsoft and I'm on the second story or up on top of some stairs. I sometimes miss targets that are right below me because the gun is just blocking my vision. Also, something to take into account is the length of the weapon. When cornering with this gun or right at the edge of a corner, if the barrel of your weapon is sticking out a window or around that corner, you will be exposed and visible to enemies around you. Especially with the massive muzzle flash that's going to come off of this weapon, you will be giving away your position just with the size of it. So, you know, using things like flash hiders can really help conceal your position a little bit more. And right now, I am taking advantage of the high ground on Zavad 311. This map is so singular uh, minded in terms of the strategy. Get on the roof, shoot down on players below, win the game. Whichever team controls the roof in Zavad 311 TDM, you're going to win hands down. It is just such an easy spot to get kills from. I don't necessarily recommend going this strategy as it doesn't require as much skill, but strategic wise, uh, it is just simply the best strategy to use. And you will certainly see that the scoreboard reflects this even while using a naked M60 LMG. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what you would like me to run for the next episode of Loda. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.